Hey guys, uh, welcome back. Uh, as you guys know, I've got the off-grid house going on, and I'm, you know, um, always trying to keep myself busy doing something. As you guys know, you guys are probably following my series as far as the um, DC hot water is concerned, as far as the dump load and stuff like that. Um, that series is still continuing, um, and you guys can you guys can look up those videos and check them out. There's a different bunch of different parts to it. Uh, anyway, um, today what I'm gonna do, guys, is um, I'm gonna test my batteries, the cells, for Pacific Gravity. Um, and what I'm gonna use is a um, hydrometer, a battery hydrometer, okay? And uh, this is gonna help, you know, like a lot of you guys out there, you know, because uh, I know a lot of us just test the battery voltage itself, you know? And that's okay too, you know, but um, if you really wanna get more detailed in your, um, your batteries and your off-grid system and maintaining things and checking things out and monitoring things, um, you know, it, it's gonna, gonna be a good investment for you to pick up one of these here. I'm not advertising for this company or anything. This is just the one, um, actually I've had, I've kind of had this for a while, but when I was digging up all my rest of my, um, DC heater elements and stuff, I ended up coming back across it because I knew I had one, but, and I was just about to buy another one and <laughs> it was lucky, lucky enough I was digging through all my stuff and I found my, um, my old one, but my old one is, it's new, but old, you know what I mean? Cause I've like. I bought it a long time ago and I never used it because I couldn't find it. And <laughs> now I found it. So, anyway, um, the one I'm using here is called Easy Read, E Z R E D. Let me see if I can get it focused. Okay. So you guys can see that it says good, fair, low, and there's a bunch of numbers in between, right? So if it's popping up, you know, good or whatever, then you know you have a really good battery. If it's popping up on low, then you know you have a bad battery. So let's do a base test first to make sure everything is working properly, right? So what I have here, guys, is, is just a, a cup of water, right? Now, if you guys look on the meter, there's actually a water, a water um, uh, marking to tell you that if it's water or not, right? Because nothing's in here right now. It's empty. So let's go ahead and um, focus. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, fill her up. Now let's take a look at it. So, that's water, right? Water from the tap, and it's representing water here on the meter. Exactly. So that's that's good. Okay, so let's put that back in there. We don't need this anymore. That was just the base test. So let's start with, say, um, let's start with my um, house battery bank. Let's just start with one cell so we can compare it to these old L16 batteries, okay? So, I'm going to go ahead and... Oh, I got my wires everywhere. So, I'm going to go ahead and um, put this in here and uh, we're going to suck up some of the water in here. Okay, I'm going to pull it out. And as you guys can see, it's reading good. 1,250. It's reading good. So, I mean, it's not the best of good, right? But it's still good, okay? So, that's good news. So, that bad, that cell is in decent shape. That's good, okay? So, instead of me testing all my cells over here, let me just jump over here, because um, I am going to test all my cells again. So, let's go to this cell right here on this um, L16 battery, okay? So, let's put this in here. Okay. Now you guys can see this one is saying fair, 1,200. Okay. So it's not a low, low junk battery, but it's it's on its way. You know what I mean? So let's go ahead and pump that back in there. Now what we're measuring is the electrolyte that's in the battery, right? So now let's go to this battery over here. I mean, you can test each cell individually and. Um, if I was you guys, if you guys start, like, when I build a brand new house, guys, I, I am, but, I mean, when I install my brand new equipment, guys, I mean, even though I'm going to have, like, 32 batteries, I'm going to make a chart, right, on a piece of paper or notepad or whatever, and I'm going to test every single cell on those 32 batteries. I'm going to label battery, like, number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all the way up to num number 32, and I'm going to write my numbers down so that way I know exactly what... The, the brand new fresh battery started off at you know at what what number and and how it's sitting brand new 
And then as time goes on, you know, I can um, do my test and I can compare it to the original brand new battery. So as years go on and years go by, you can go back and test to see, you know, um, how well your battery is holding up. And um, just in case you may have a bad battery in your array of batteries, uh, you'll be able to find which battery it's bad. Besides checking the voltage, you know, there's a couple of different ways you can do this, right? So um, we tested that one. So let's test this one over here now. <clears throat> okay, so now this one is below fair. We're in low. Okay, so as you guys can see, the difference from uh, better battery from back there, and we're testing different cells on different batteries. But I would suggest you, you know, um, make a notation on your um, paperwork, whatever you're gonna do um, on each cell. So like battery number one, cell one two three you know and you can make a reference of cell number one closest to the positive or negative or whatever you want to do but as you guys can see on this one we're low right so it's kind of telling us the state of the battery that cell at least okay so now let me put this down for a second here let me open up this port here on this one okay now let's go ahead and insert it. These are old L16 batteries, guys. These are the ones I've been trying to save. So let's see where we sit. Oh, this is a bad battery, guys. Now here's, I'm gonna show you why it's a bad battery. Look, that's next to water, <laughs> right? For that cell on that battery, it's pretty much toasted. It's, yeah, this, this is a bad battery right here, okay? So, but you know what, um, this, with all fairness, let's go ahead and pop all the tops off here on this one bad battery. And um, check the next cell. Because remember, one cell may be more damaged than the other. But then again, if you do have a damaged cell within that battery, it's going to bring down the whole battery. So, that one's just a, well, it's not, not that much better either, right? That's the second cell on that battery. We're still in low. So let's go ahead and pump it back in there and let's go to the last um, cell here Let me pull the water out. Okay, so now let's take a look. Make sure it's okay. So sorry. So there we are. So this is a very low, this battery right here, I checked every cell in it. It's not good. Okay. And, and it corresponds with the voltage as well, guys. Because what I did earlier when I was dumping my power into this as my... Let me pump this back in here. Um, when I was, you know, recharging these batteries for my dump load, I would charge them for a couple of days and then disconnect them, let them settle. Then I would take the voltage off each battery. Not combined batteries, just each battery so you can see where they sit. Some was sitting very, very decent or semi-decent and some was sitting pretty bad. And that voltage, that, the one that has some battery, um, bad voltage was that battery but you always want to double check it because you can still have a drained battery as far as voltage is concerned but um and you might think that's a dead battery when it's not when you if you do your hydro test here hydrometer test or pacific gravity test it'll actually tell you the state of that battery so i know for a fact this battery here is you know pretty much junk you know okay so let's go back to these cells on these batteries here yeah okay so we did this first one. Let's double check our numbers again. Let's pull up, see where we're at. So this one is saying we're fair at 1,200. Okay. Next cell. Focus. There we go. Okay, so that next cell is not so... I mean, the, the first cell was at 1,200. Now this one's at 1,175. So you guys can see that it's, you know, it's going down a little bit here between each cell. They're not going to be the same all the way across the board because you may have a shorted cell within this battery. Okay, now let's look at the last cell. Okay, so now we're back up to 1,200. So this middle cell on this battery, right, is is giving us, giving us trouble. But it's still, let's see, let's pull our number again. It's still in fair, okay, it's, it's almost about to be a junk battery. But uh, you might be able to get some life out of that battery, maybe. 
you know it's on it's on the edge of not you know holding up okay so now let's pop the tops off of this battery here and let's double check all our on, on here so as you guys can see each cell is going to vary a little bit depending on what's going on and how much abuse this batteries have been taking right so let's go ahead and fill this one up and we'll pull it out so that's 1200 fair that cell okay so we'll go to the next one That, that cell is just a little bit lower than that first cell I tested. It's in between now. Okay, so let's go to this last cell over here. Let's check that cell. Oh, that cell is low, see? So, you guys can see this gives you a little bit more of a detail on what's going on what's your, with your cells and the electrolyte in that battery. So... Um, what I'm going to do, let me um, pop the top off of my positive side of my house battery bank, guys, okay? Give me a second here. Let me get in here and I got to make more room, guys. I'm always playing around with different things in here. Okay, so that battery top is popped off. Okay. So let's take our Pacific Gravity test on the positive battery of my house batteries. Let's Okay, let me step up back so I don't trip over everything here. Let's take a look at where we're at. Now you want to make sure you hold this, you know, level because if you move it around like this, you know, then it'll move around, you know. So you want to like hold it, you know, a 90 degree, just hold it nice and level there. So you guys can see this is a good battery still. Well, it's not a best battery, but it's it's still decent in decent shape. It's not even in fair yet. It's pretty close, but not there yet, right? So um actually it's right there I'm trying to hold it level I'm trying to make sure you hold it level so it's in pretty decent i mean it's in, it's in decent shape you know and that's a four-year-old battery um that i've been running on for the last um four years so <clears throat> you know it's good to test every cell though you know because you're going to have maybe a dead cell here and there you never know right or shorted cell or or I mean not shorted but um the electrolyte in that cell may be just completely gone you know as far as the plates have absorbed it and it's done so yeah as you guys can see this little tester they, they come in different um shapes sizes brands colors and whatever whatever you know whichever one you go decide to go with um but I've been using this one is very you got to be very delicate delicate with it because you know there's a little thing in there that's got like a little weight and a float and you know, you just got to be, don't be throwing this around and think it's going to work perfectly every time, you know. So be careful with it, take care of it. So that way when you need to come back and um, test your battery cells and all that and the electrolyte, um, you know, at least you know you're getting a semi-accurate um, reading. See how it, you can move, there's nothing in here, right? So it's only air. Um, so let me try and take a, um, let me go to the middle here. Sorry guys. So I'm going to go to the middle of my bat my battery array. Well, not the exact middle, but pretty close. So let's take up reading off that one now. Oh, see now you guys see? That's my one of well, it's not the exact middle because there's six batteries, so there's no such thing as a middle battery really. Um so the two the two center batteries would be like the middle batteries, I guess you could say. And as you guys can see, this one is at 1,200. Fair. That's that's you know it's not not as good as the other batteries that we've tested, you know. So now let me go to the last cell in the line over here. Pull that up. Oh, you see, guys, low. Okay. So see, see, you guys can see that you know by testing your um, cells, you can get a better understanding of what's going on with your battery bank and your battery itself. You know, you can do this, you know, you can test an individual battery or whatever it is. So that makes me, so the, my in batteries, electrolyte and the battery itself is doing very well. The one in the, the more, the more towards the middle you get, the, the worse they get. I mean, they're still good, they're still good batteries and they're four years old, but, you know, you guys can see the difference in the electrolyte and the, the readings. So this is a very handy little um, gadget to have, guys, uh, especially if you guys are living off the grid like I am and... 
or if you guys have a high um uh what do you call it a hybrid system or you know even a car battery car batteries have electrolyte and if, unless it's a completely sealed battery right you can pop the top off you know check your water and all that stuff and then you can also you know test the, your your car battery if it if it has the ports that you can remove and use you know so you know i just wanted to share that share that with you guys today um because i'm still doing a bunch of different experiments here and i'm just looking at all my batteries and i'm like and i started i started digging through finding all my other stuff for this hot water heater and i ended up coming across my um hydrometer so you know it's it's good to and i'm glad i didn't go buy i mean they're not that expensive guys but i'm just glad i didn't go buy another one when i already had one I think I've only used it once um, prior to this, and I think I used it when I first bought the brand new batteries. Um, but back then, I was so anxious just to start, you know, the off-grid thing because I, you know, I needed power right away. That you know, I tested them and all looked good, and then I just put the caps on and started firing everything away. I never did write down the numbers of each battery and where it was standing, you know, each cell for each battery. And I think that's a good tip for you guys, so that way you guys can monitor your batteries over time, you know. <coughs> so yeah guys um anyway just a quick little video guys on testing your batteries it you know some different some of these will come with different readings or different like how it reads or whatever um but i find this one um there was another one years ago i tried uh, this is back before i was even off the grid guys uh i used to carry them around for my car batteries because i used to go through car batteries a lot right so i would test them test them test them and because with a car battery it's usually a couple things either a Either you have something grounding out that's draining your battery, bad alternator, or a bad battery. So, I used to use another one to test those, but uh, it wasn't that uh, that accurate. But this one's a little bit um, ac more accurate, but um, just got to be gentle with it so you don't bang it around and break it, you know. I mean, they're cheap little things, but it works, you know. <laughs> and it's pretty crazy because if you test it against the water here, right? Pull it up. And... Let's see focus we're right on water so that's the base test guys so if you get one of these things the first thing i would do guys is test the water don't test your battery on the first one um because if it balances back out at, at um water then you know that this is pretty much um you know working properly or close enough to it and then that way after that you can go and check your cells so yeah that's pretty interesting guys um we got different readings from different batteries and different cells so like this one is well, let me hold it fair this one is fair and then uh one one last tip guys if you guys test your batteries what i would recommend you guys do is put it back into water right fill it all the way up and then um you know shake it around a little bit and just dis discharge it so that way you're rinsing it out so that way you're not having um, battery water, you know, re remaining in here. So right there, I just flushed it out. And now I know for sure that there's no battery water in here. It's just mostly just, I flushed it out with clean water. And that way it helped prolong it as well. Anyway, guys, just a really quick tip on um, testing your battery cells and stuff. And I really, I would really um, push the issue with you guys to, you know, um, get you guys a binder paper or a chart or something. And, you know, start labeling things so that way you guys know which batteries is which, which cells is which. Um, do your numbers, do your testing, so that way you know where everything is sitting. Like you, you can test your brand new voltage when you get the batteries. You know, you can test uh, the Pacific gravity in the batteries, and then you'll really understand your system and your batteries a lot better, guys. I mean, you'd be surprised. Like a lot of people, you know, don't even think about this right here. They're like, "What the hell is this thing?" Right? You know, and you know, if if you if you know what you're doing, or at least you have a good idea of what you're doing. Or you've seen other people use something similar to this, you know, like, like, like maybe, you know, you're looking at this now and be like, oh, I didn't even know that existed. You know what I mean? A lot of you guys out there you, that's in the car industries and stuff, you guys know what that is. And or a lot of you guys that have a lot of experience with batteries and stuff, you guys know what that is. But um, anyway, guys, I don't want to carry this on too much longer. There's a really quick video on how to test your batteries as far as to see if they're good, bad, and, you know, if they're going to be, um, you know, um, if you're going to maybe, maybe get a, another life out of them. Because now think about it, guys. If I would have um, tested all these batteries and it would have came close to, like, water, that battery is gone. That's Well, at least that cell is gone. And that the electrolyte in that cell is completely gone. And then, you know, there's no sense of even trying to um, maybe save the battery. The one thing I don't have experience with, guys, is the BLS, the battery lifesavers. The, I think they're called the battery desulfators. Um, and I've been looking more into them. 
because I am not sure if a battery desulfator can bring back a bad battery that's got bad um, electrolyte. You know what I mean? So I'm not too sure about those things. But if you guys have any advice on those um, battery desulfators, please let me know because uh, it's going to be too hard for me to show you. But, um, you know, over the years, I've noticed there's been more more um, sulfate um, building up um, on my on my cells, the white. And, you know, it just gets, you know, over years, over years, over years, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, right? Um, but from my understanding is, is that those things are supposed to be able to... Um, um, help break down the buildup off the cells so that way it push it you know it basically breaks it off or pushes it off and um, it, it allows that sulf um, sulfate to be um, to be um, re-diluted in a such a way that way the water and the solution for the um, electrolyte can be uh, reabsorbed because the plates on your cells are taking up all that um, uh, sulfur and it's not being it's not allowing it to go back out into the solution right so if you guys have any experience with those battery desulfators and stuff like that or the um, bls's or whatever you want to call them please leave a comment below guys or on the side of the video or whatever and let me know if you guys have tried them um which brand have you guys tried how much were how much did they cost um where'd you get them from and how well do they work and you know you know if you just bought one a week ago don't leave a comment you know what i mean because you you really don't know um you don't have enough testing behind it to, you know, leave a just, just comment. But I'm looking for the guys that have been using them for, you know, you know, years, you know, a year here, you know, over six months here, you know, that kind of stuff. And which ones are, are the ones to maybe go with? Cause I'm really thinking about buying them, um, for not only for my 12 volt system, but for the new 48 volt system for the new house guys. Cause if I can stretch my batteries out longer, I mean, better off for everybody, right? Because less money you got to spend to buy batteries and you know you can get more life out of things. So that's the whole idea, right? Take care of your equipment, guys. So anyway, guys, um, I'm signing out right now. Um, um, if you guys haven't catched up on all the, 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 the part one, part two, part three, and so on of the solar hot water heating, um, be sure you do because it's very interesting. Um, um, I'm actually very happy with that. And um, if you guys have any questions regarding the... Um, it, the <clears throat> battery um hydrometer here uh, i forget how much i paid for this thing a long time ago but they're fairly inexpensive guys like i want to i probably want to say like 20 bucks or less or 15 dollars or less they're not expensive right so this is a good investment for the money you know if you're if you're doing what i'm doing and living off the grid guys you know just a tip anyway guys i'll see you guys in the next video stay positive keep the projects rolling guys and uh, i'll see you guys in the next one